for some parts it will get on, but uh, it's, it's so disconcerting to see Cannonball being shot in a way. Not that I know that, but I've heard that. Yeah. <laughs> The average musketeer is carrying between 12 and 15 shots with him. A good musketeer, fired at full whack, might be able to get off two to three shots a minute. But if you do that within five minutes... Absolutely. So basically, the faster they fire now, the less powder they have later. They in that look, they bring in the pike up now as well. Well, they are. They're committing a good deal of resources for something that I can't understand. To so, be remember we said the Royalists are short of powder. I could already. Who are these villagers that oh, turned out today to so watch a, a, a magnificent battle? Um, can you just put your hands up if you are pro Royalists? <laughs> oh, kind of luck. Got hands up those who are true born parliamentarians. It's about even Stevens, mate. Okay, we can convert them to our court. We'll we'll come, yeah. So, here we have it. Both field armies now taking the field. It's all done in very slow order, nothing thrust. So, they're coming down on the road barriers right by me. I can see the city of London. The centre of the that is Cromwell's brigade. I can see the green colours there is Skipper. The blue colours are Pickering's. And here are Waller's own horse. Do you want to talk a bit about the uh, riders and the horse and the seal that Robin? Well, on this occasion, we're always very proud of Waller's horse. They, they are usually very disciplined and very uh, elitist. Uh, they, they, they use their, their tactics very well. There's a difference between them and the, the Wallace who ride with the spirit and the land of young gentlemen. They, they're more wild, more uh, flamboyant. Um, and you, you'll see during the battle that the two essences of the two um, modes of operandi. Now Ian, let's explain what the young gentlemen here are doing. What they're doing is they're flourishing their colours. Now this is a, a common 17th century practice. They're displaying which regiments the Royalists are up against. They're displaying they're up for a fight, and they're displaying that they're ready to engage in battle. The colour is the heart of the regiment. Displaying the colours like this is a demonstration of your bravery, your zeal. The top of colours behind you there, Robin. The Royalist Army, another brigade there for the field. That's the Oxford Church, yeah? Do the red colours there, the King's Lifeguard of Foot. And the black and white colours are Prince Rupert's Blue Regiment. So there's two very good units being uh, They are the good units. Allegedly. Uh, behind them, I can see the King's Western Brigade coming. They're there only because the, the officers will be explaining to their regiments and listening to the orders being given to you by the drums. And also to watch where their colours are because that's where their rallying points are, so they have to listen to the drums have to watch where the colours are. Very important for both armies. The way, when you see the armies engaged, in the real civil war, in many battles, there was many cavalrys that were pike and musket. Cavalry cost an awful lot in the 21st century, and we just can't afford that number of horses or riders. Therefore, we have a lot more infantry as a proportion in the civil war battle, and an awful lot more pike than you would normally have. Now, the pike's job is one of the biggest testosterone things you could ever take part in. Marching past with the army, troops of the City of London train bands. It just there, Wallace Hall's keeping the flank of the London Brigade goes forward, and now Trouble's Brigade moving forward. We have a we have a diagonal battle, Robin. We do indeed. We have a diagonal battle. And I, I must observe clever use of cavalry there because this is quite a small body of uh, the city of London, but with cavalry support, it, it, it gives them an edge. A real edge here. Yeah, the cavalry is straight into engage. Now I think the parliamentary Lord General's played a bit of a blinder here. Because with a rather small brigade from the north, he's tying down a third of the Royalist army. He's going 
the point, his better strength, outnumbered though he is against the Central Riders' two Turches. This could be a very good move, but look up there, Robin, the first push of bike. Yes, indeed. So I'm just staying very still because these horses are trained. I have better chance of not being hurt if I just stand still and walk past me, I hope. Sure. Nice to meet you. You found Sean Thurley there, but the am, yeah. ugliest cavalier. So we, we take great care of our horses. That we don't like to see them hurt at all. And they're rested. Is, Robin, the, 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 the riders are expendable, the horses aren't. That's right, yes. So, right, it's all starting to happen now, Ian. We've got uh, the... Have they got the zeal and the energy? Absolutely. Uh, but look at the middle there. Um, Wallace Brigade was outnumbered by the Oxford Pike of the King's Life Guard and the, uh, the Ruperts, but it does seem the moment if they hold their own. But this is a hot afternoon on difficult turf. I just wonder how long they can keep that going, Robin. Well, yes, I can, uh, I, I, I can see that uh, if they can keep up this pace, they'll be windy before, well, in another 10 minutes, I should imagine. In fact, I'm going to try and have a word with the Parliament, uh, Parliament Lord General to uh, play in Massey to see uh, how he feels. Because uh, if you could spare me a moment, can you can you tell tell us your 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 objectives today? Well, my objective is to take out the Royalist Army and make sure that they can't uh, advance towards Gloucester. I've been sent out to what I initially thought was going to be easy to say, up on my left flank against the uh, enemy coming forward. But as I deployed, I then noticed the rest of the army coming in, his, his troops coming forward. So I had to deploy forward and. At the moment, it looks like we're holding our own, and I think we can win this day. The only thing that might be the problem, which I don't, I doubt it, because we have lots of uh, spares in the uh, in the uh, fortress there, is a uh, lack of powder. Yes, there are some rumours. You'll be very aggressive today, I might add. Well, yes, that's the way we can talk. That's the way we take this war to them. Well, that's the words from the, the horse's mouth, so to speak. Tell us you fall back and you just spent an hour getting there. It, it, it kind of hurts in the heart. Oh, like the amount of times I've had to use very, very, very polite words of, of well Bill on staff to ask the to, to politely move back. Um, I've often found the best way to just turn to about face and advance. It sometimes feels a bit better for you, Robin. Yes. No one likes to give ground, no one likes to give talent to him. So, as we, uh, as you explained earlier, here we have those pauses. Um, as the other, thing, the other thing worth pointing out, we're not just watering the men, the horses are periodically being taken off the field for watering as well, so those horses are being very well looked after, Robin. They have a team of grooms just to check them out, see if they're not sweating up or getting too nervous. Very, we've got some very good horses this weekend, have you I In 50, 50 plus years of the seal dot, I've never seen, seen a horse hurt. I've seen plenty of riders, but we don't worry about them. They try to stick to close ground, so he's coming in over chipping water, stolen the wall with the slaughter. Now what's happened? Is his, his foot got attacked near Chippy Walton just outside the stone the wall. There was a dramatic battle, and Sir Philip Skipper, his sergeant made general blue, led a massive balance of height, chased off the royal horn, through stone the wall, and into upper and lower slaughter. Um, now that was an incredible achievement by Skipper to see off the cavalry with Pike. Um, he saw about 3,000 of the Oxford horse at the command of Lord Water. Good 50 feet. There's a swirling cavalry valley going on in front of the commentary box at the moment between the prettiest parliamentarian on the field, Rosie Sale, and the ugliest royalist, Sean Curley. In they go at the point of pike. Crockett's brigade, Skippens and Pickering's pike straight in there. Do you think parliament will hold? I've just seen the Parliament Lord General now, he's come back to converse with the Pike of the London Brigade and he's pushing them in. I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering. How many shots have you left, sir? We're done. Uh, some of us still have one or two, but I'm done. So there, 
Roman Musketeer is now almost used for the moment. Now you think how they must be able to shot up on that hill? Yes. Because they've been following a lot, a lot longer. Yes. Powder is now critical. Well, no one even up now. There we are. See, he's gone to butt end the musket. They are, they go low powder. Who needs a baby when you've got a club musket? Slamming swimsuits. But yes, it's, it's, it's all over by the shouting. It's now how does Parliament withdraw? And how does Barry? Gay says some, some moral maturity, otherwise he, he's been defeated. The ground will be soaked red with blood and gore. Horses will be screaming and fleeing around the battlefield with the head sails hanging out. There'll be desperation in the, in the gun lines, trying to withdraw the guns. In fact, I can see the Royalists are withdrawing their guns, always the first sign of, 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 of a battle over. The Royalists are withdrawing, do they hear you right there, Robin? Look, they're, they're taking artillery off them. They're out of powder, aren't they? They're out of powder, yeah. This is all bluff. It's all bluff. Well, basically, the Royalist Lord General trade, trade, is trading men's lives now in order for the, um, the appearance, almost, isn't he? Well, that's except um, uh, a, a, a conversation, and then they withdraw. So, so it's all very genteel. It's all written down in the, in the arts of warfare. Now, you and I know, Robbie, but one of the things Germans often carry with them is... Uh, they, they, they carry jelly tots and things, don't they? They, they do indeed. And occasionally I have those sweeties to be swapped in these parlies. But we won't, we won't tell anybody, will we? That'll be our secret. Arrangements. It will take a lot of your troops dead before you get anywhere near us with our artillery, our musket. You will drop like stones in a river coming towards us. Are you ex prepared to accept your losses? Because at the end, there will not be enough to attack us. We will have the upper hand. You know this, sir. You can see our defences. You can see how strong we are. You can see our artillery lines, our musket lines. Sir, I've spotted some weaknesses within your lines. So, so be it. You will die this day. Barry pays his compliments. Thanks for their hard work. Next up, Dave Parks, the Marcus of Newcastle, Tertia. Lyles at the front, now here you see the, the pikes come to the port, this is the general salute. Right at the back there, one of the best pikes in the sealed knot, Jim Bow from Lyles. How we still walk, I don't know, by yes, I'm energy. There are Marcus and Newcastle's white coats. And then we have to get our sail again. The black and white colours are Hawks Regiment. And in there, members in their blue coats are my favourite Royalist Regiment, Gerards. And a famous seal on commission there for Jaggeroff. <laughs> Next come the shots of Lyles, Hawkins and Gerards. And Newcastle, I do apologise, and Newcastle. Tick will never forgive me for that, and Newcastle. Next comes the um, Beckwith of uh, I can see here Northamptons. Morris's Lagoons. I can see Barnes and their Baggots. And now the Scots Brigade, let's stop them by Ian Bly. Regiments here from all over the country, as far as Aberdeen, we've got. Gordon's Regiment, O'Cairn's Regiment, Lachlan's Regiment and Fraser Dragoons. Next up comes the Oxford Foot, led by Nick Island, next to the blue, the immensity of the Jeff Harper. And we have the King's Lifeguard of Foot, heading up the Oxford Church of the King's Lifeguard in red. Rupert's blue coat scheme, funny enough, blue coat. And we have Rivers as well, Rivers Regiment, I can see it there. Somewhere in there will be more Frenchmen as well, I guess. Here are the red colours of the King's Lifeguard.
plumbers look tired now. <laughs> Drummers have got one out of the job now, they've got to kick that beat down and get them all home. Boys <laughs> Army's behaved absolutely incredibly this afternoon on the hill, the real valley of the tech I went to Storm Gloucester. It wasn't the fault of these men they ran out of powder, they just, there was no want of bravery, just want of ammunition. Other architects are available. Here is he now. We've got the red coats of the London Trademan, the green coats of Samuel Joneses, the blue coats of Hasbrick, the orange coats of Essexes. And coming next, Cromwell's Brigade, led by Sergeant Major General Phil Tilly. Straight to the front, we have Sir Philip Skippon's regiment, their green colours, and the blue colours of Pickering's regiment. The musket there. The gallant musket of Pickering's and Skippens fight so hard on the flank here this afternoon. The pike for Crumbs and Milbans, yeah, the pike for Cromwell's brigade that I just saw scything through the Royalist Army this afternoon. Absolutely immense. Next up, led by Colonel General Jim Biss, all the way from Bath, we have William Wallace's brigade at the front. We have the muskets of Robarts, the dragoons of Wardlaws, and the blue coats of Skippens. Here come the drums. Can you see there the yellow colours of Ballards, the red colours of Robarts? You'll recognise these. Pushing the Royal Army back all afternoon in their well. Ballards as well in there. Ballards, cars. And now. The elite of the Parliament's army, the special forces, the dragoons of Colonel John O'Key. Flouncing past the commentary position as if they haven't seen a shot fired all afternoon. Where do they get the energy from? Pushing through the Royalists like a moist for lunch. <laughs> And now we have Fairfax Tertia led by Dave Tomlinson at the front. The Musketeers of Manchester's regiment. I can see their Grey's regiment in as well. Says and Seals. Hutchinson's or both. And Hutchinson's as well will be in there. Oh, and some Musketeers of London in there as well. And here come the Pike of the Northern the Fairfax Brigade led at the moment by rather a, a, a mincing Simon Jones and Earl Grey's regiment. <laughs> Here we are, the blue colours of the other Manchester regiment. Here we are, we've got gels in here, we've got Hutchinson's, we've got Manchester's, we've got Grey's, we've got Lord St. Seals regiment. Again, and these for a massive, massive action up there on the hill, hold 